Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns.
physical food. So this morning we're going to get some spiritual food. Amen. Amen. I'd ask that you stand with me now as we recite our Bible material, as we recite our <laughs> worship litany. I'm too full. I fixed, I'm off chitlins this morning. Why are we here? We are here to serve. Who will we serve? And what will we do to serve them? When hungry, we will feed them. When thirsty, we will give them water to drink. When a stranger, we will welcome them in. When we're naked, we will clothe them. When sick, we will visit them. When in prison, we will go to them. When will we serve them? From now until Christ returns. Where will we serve them? In the sanctuary, in our homes, and in our communities. How will we be led? Trying to have the church eat, to be led by the Spirit of God. 
your smartphones to represent your Bible application and recite with me our Bible lesson. Hallelujah. This is my Bible. It is plenary, complete in all aspects. It's inerrant, free from all error. It's infallible, incapable of error. It's incapable of error and expounding doctrine on faith and law. I believe it to be the living word of God. I believe it reveals the treasures of truth, life, health, and happiness. I believe it reveals the person of Jesus Christ and his teachings. With the help of the Holy Spirit, I will live in accordance with his teachings. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and all-wise God, we come now on this last Sunday morning of 2015 to praise and worship your holy name, Father. Not that everything in 2015 has been a bed of roses. We have seen ups and we have seen down. We have climbed mountains and we have walked through valleys. But Father, we did all of those things with relationship with you. And for that, these people of God in this local congregation are thankful, Father. Yes. We are thankful yes. that when the mountain got steep, well, well. you were with us. We're thankful, Father, when the valley got low yes. and the sun was hard to see. Yes that you were with us, Father. God, just in all things, we, your people, are happy that you are with us. So right now, Father, pour out your spirit in this place, Father. From the back of the balcony to the back of the choir stand, fill this sanctuary with your presence. Allow our pastor to preach with preaching power. And if anyone is in here who doesn't know you with the pardon of their sins, allow something to be done so that person would come run and ask, what must I do to be saved? We say these things all because of the crucified Christ. And together the people of God said, amen. Glory be to the Father.
morning, church. Morning. Our very own Lily Harden is celebrating her 95th birthday, and she does not miss uh, church Sunday, uh, and her family is here celebrating with her. So we'll wish her a happy birthday later on. Can't see her. Can't she step out? There you go. Happy 95th birthday. And she's here every Sunday worshiping with us. Good morning, Zion. Will all first time visitors please stand? Will all first time visitors please stand? On behalf of our pastor, Reverend Gerald J. Joyner, and the youth ushers, which I represent, we welcome you on this day. If you are in the city and you don't have a church home at this time of the invitation, we welcome you to come join our Zion family. And if you are just visiting, we hope you will please come again. Now, Zion, let's show our guests some love.
Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen again. Saints of God, I'll be very, very brief. We want to move expeditiously, but uh, time and time and time again over the last five years, I've stood before you and expressed my appreciation and my thanks to you for all of your prayers and for your support. Many of you know of the battle that my son Tarn has had with cancer for this five years and, and how he's been up and he's been down. Many of you were very, very supportive of me uh, and the loss of my wife, Laverne, two and a half years ago. Uh, long story short, you've been there for me. And, and I am very, very blessed and very, very appreciative of all of the support you've given me. Um, so since I've shared a lot of somber news with you uh, over the last five years, I thought it prudent today to share some great news with you. Uh, this was, if not the greatest Christmas I've ever had uh, in my 60 plus years of living, this was one of the best Christmases that I've had. There's a reason for that, and I'd like to share that reason with you now. As you can see on the bulletin, uh, this is Tarn and Jonah's Christmas card that they are sending to you here at Zion. It says, Happy Holidays from the Joinings. Pictures of Tarn and his lovely wife, Jonah. But as we flip it, it has, uh, and uh, a Happy New Year. Amen. <laughs> Pastor Jonah is going to be a grandpa. Amen. to share that with you, that God is indeed a great God. Even, even in spite of the difficulty. In spite of the disappointments, he's still faithful. And so come June of 2016, you'll probably see me carrying a little bundle of joy. Amen. And presenting my grandbaby to you at that time. So God bless you. God keep you. God thank you for all of your love and for all of your support. Amen. Good morning, Zion. It's kind of strange standing here seeing everybody in different places. I see my mother. I was going to tell her to say so I could find her. But let us continue on with uh, worship, and uh, if you would, would you please stand with me as we recite our tithers jointly? And we have uh, Sister Williams, Rosetta Williams, and uh, let's see, I... Brain damage uh, over here, Mary Bush <laughs> holding. Oh, okay. And the children will be dismissed. So they're holding the uh, um, the little jars for your extra change. And our children will be dismissed at this moment for a little bit of service.
it is time to give. Praise the Lord. And Zion, it is tithing and giving time. And we are ready to bless the Lord with our tithe and offering. To whom does the tithe belong? of our gross or out of our net. Giver does the Lord love. Second Corinthians nine seven teaches us that God loves a cheerful giver. And what scripture governs our giving? Second Corinthians nine six through eight teaches us that. But this I say, he who sows sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he that sows bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according to his purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly. directions of the ushers from the back of the church. Again, all things come of thee, O Lord.
has been brought to my attention that we did need to make uh, an additional announcement. Many of you know that our own uh, brother Kevin Martin, Deacon Kevin Martin, lost his mother. And her services, the wake will be tonight here at Zion from 3 until 8 o'clock. So there's a five-hour wait uh, trying to make accommodations for those who are driving in from out of town. So the wake will be tonight, uh, this afternoon, from 3 o'clock to 8 o'clock here in Zion. And then the funeral services will be tomorrow at 11 o'clock. Tomorrow at 11 o'clock. So we ask you, we solicit your prayers for Deacon Martin. Uh, it's the reason he's not here right now. Uh, and uh, for his entire family. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, also, please, uh, brothers and sisters, refer to your bulletin. I don't know if anybody was going to make an announcement about our watch night services. Um, but our watch night services are indeed this week. Now, I've, I've got a question mark. I, I see in the bulletin it says a 6.30 start. And uh, 6.30 is a little early. Amen. So we're going to get clarification on that. How many of you remember being here last year? If you were here last year, raise your hand. Amen. Quite a few of us were here. We have a good time. Amen. Now, Amen. what I recall us is starting at 9. Amen. All right. So we go from 9 till 11 in Friendship Hall, and then we move from Friendship Hall into the sanctuary at 11 o'clock, and we worship from 11 till midnight. Amen? Amen. And we have prayer. We pray the new year in. And then at right after New Year's, we go back to Friendship Hall. And then the right Reverend Tory Gaines <laughs> and his ensemble will help us dance the night fantastic. Amen. <laughs> with their jazz rendition, amen, of a numerous <laughs> number of songs. Would y'all care for a sample real quick? Yeah. Mm -hmm. can, can you just give me a couple of bars or, or whatever, anything right now, just a couple of bars? <laughs> That's enough, that's enough. If you want more than that, you got to be here. Amen, amen. Reverend does not disappoint. Amen. With that, my brother, let us continue on in our worship service. Uh, this morning's hymn is Go Tell It on the Mountain. <laughs> Oh, 
Praise the Lord, Zion. Praise Amen. It is prayer time. Amen. Amen. That you stand on your feet. Amen. And whatever your concerns are, whatever you're praying about, whatever you're praying for, we ask that you bring your concerns to the altar. And when we pray, we ask that you would leave them there. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it right there. Put it in the hands of the man who can steal the waters, who can calm the seas. Put it in the hands of the man who can do anything but fail. He is the great I am. That means he can be whatever we need him to be. Even before we ask, he's already answered and provided an answer because he already knows and already given us the strength to deal with whatever we have to deal with. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for being an awesome God. We thank you, God, for being a holy God who is just, who is from everlasting to everlasting, who is not concerned about time because you created time. And because you are all-knowing and all-powerful, God, you knew that we needed a Savior. And so, God, we thank you that we don't have to only celebrate you on Christmas, but we can celebrate you every day of our life. Because it is you and because of you that we have made it to this day. God, this is the last Sunday of this year. And we have been through snowstorms. We have been through rain and tornadoes. We've been through sickness and pain. We've been through hurt and heartache. We've been through suffering. And we had some joys, God. We thank you, God, that all of our days wasn't bad. We, we had some uptime, God. So thank you for the good times. We had family fellowships. We had birthdays and babies being born. And thank you, God, for just giving us and providing us for what we need each and every day. God, we've been through a whole lot, but whether it was good or bad, we thank you, God, that it was you who sustained us and who has kept us. God, we give you the credit that you are so deserving of. God, we lift up those who are hurting and those who have lost loved ones. Pray for the Martin family, God. But God, while there is death and death is a part of life. God, we thank you that we don't weep as we have no hope, for we know that we have a home on the other side. And God, we also thank you for babies being born. We thank you for Tyron and Jonah, Pastor Jonah. We celebrate with our pastor and first family as they celebrate this wonderful gift from you, God. Because when we see babies being born, we realize that you have not given up on us, God. And so we thank you for life and life more abundantly, God. We thank you that uh, while we had to deal with pain and suffering, you have given us sunshine. After the rain, the sunshine does shine. So thank you, God, even when we're going through that we don't have to worry because we're going through. And we are going to come out on the other side as prayer goes. We might be bruised up, but we can still say thank you. We might be torn up, but we're still going to say thank you. We might be broken down and coming in on broken pieces, but we can still say thank you, God, because we are not dead. You gave us another opportunity to lift you up and give you the praise. And so, God, through it all, we lift you up. Through it all, we praise your name. Through it all, we love you. Through it all, we depend on you. We will trust you with our whole heart. We will trust you with our mind and our soul. We will trust you with everything that we have to deal with because you are trustworthy. And everything that we deal with, you already worked it out. While we're trying to figure it out, you already worked it out. And we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. God, even when we don't know what to say or how to say, you've already worked it out. 
Thank you, Jesus. As we leave it out of this year, God, we're going to leave everything that tore us apart behind us. We're going to lift you up and depend on you because you did not bring us this far to leave us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We lift you high and we give you the praise. We thank you for trial and grace. We thank you for all the families that have come throughout this holiday season. But God, let us never forget that it's you. It's all about you. And if we would lift you up, you would draw all men unto you. So God, help us to be the people you have called us out to be. That we would lean and depend on you and trust you. And then go tell it. Don't keep our mouth shut. God, because you have been good to us. Even when we don't recognize how good you've been. Lord, help us to see that even our least is better than a whole lot of people I'm dealing with. So thank you, God, for what we have and for what you have done for us. God, we pray for those who don't know you in the part of that city. That they will come to know you before it's everlasting too late. God, we will always give you the praise. Help us to lean and depend on you and trust you as we leave out of this year and go into this new year. Help us to put it all behind us, God. Everything that hurt us, everything that broke us down, everything that messed us up. Every day that you wake us up, you give us a new opportunity to get it right, do better, to trust you more. We love you. And we appreciate you. Much obliged to you, God. In the mighty, matchless, unbeatable name of Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior, our mighty God, our holy King, we pray and ask that you would cover us with your blood. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. some good news for you today. Some really good news.
but he's not a little baby anymore. Right, That's the good news. He is the King of Kings, yes. and he is the Lord of Lords. He is the Prince of Peace.
not a little baby anymore. Isn't it good to know he went to Calvary? Save us from our sins. Would you help me appreciate this choir? Amen. Would you help me appreciate our music ministry? Amen. And Lamont. Working with us, singing in the choir, playing the organ, hallelujah. Good to have you both home. Yeah. Hi, Jacqueline. Hi, sweetheart. It's good to have you home, too. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to say a word about your school cheating my school yesterday. <laughs> Amen. Even with all that cheating, you only beat us by two points. Amen. But it's good to have you home, girl, where you belong. Everybody with red on, y'all make sure y'all rub her before she leaves. Amen. Amen and goes back. Oh, Lord, 95 years young back there. Amen. All right. 95 years young. That is indeed a blessing. And to all of my saints who are demonstrating their love for me, for me this morning Amen. by sitting in different... Amen. Either my battery just went dead or you messing with me up there, Skip. Amen. It's the battery. Okay, it's going in now. All right. If you're sitting in a different seat this morning, stand up wherever you are. Stand up wherever you are. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you so much. Brother Wallace, way down here in the front. That's all right, Lene. I know you didn't stand up, but you moved. Praise God. We thank you for where you are. Amen. 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 I know you love me. I, I know. I know. Praise God. Well, Merry Christmas, saints. It's my prayer that you had a wonderful, wonderful Christmas. Amen. And you're still resonating, amen, from the blessings of God that you received. Amen. We are just so thankful. With that stated, would you please turn with me now to our scriptural reference for this morning. It is found in the Gospel of Luke, the second chapter, verses 25 through 32. The Gospel of Luke, the second chapter, verses 25 through 32. We have it provided for you on our television monitors. It is the New American Standard Version, wherein we find these words. Let's read it together. And there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was righteous and devout, looking for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Hallelujah. And he came in the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to carry out for him the custom of the law, then he took him into his arms and blessed God and said, Now, Lord, you are releasing your bondservant to depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light of revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. From this text, I, I want to speak for just the next few moments on the subject, meeting Jesus. It's not just by happenstance. Meeting Jesus. 
It's not just by happenstance. With my underlying premise, my central theme, my main point being this. Saints, your initial meeting of Jesus or your coming to know him or more importantly, you're accepting him as your Lord and Savior wasn't just by happenstance. No, no. It wasn't just a fluke. It wasn't a mistake. It wasn't by chance. But rather, your meeting Jesus was by divine design. Amen. It was your time to meet the master. It was your time to experience a relationship with Almighty God. Yes, Lord. It was your time to experience the promises of God. And now it's your time to go and tell somebody else about Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. Oh, I wonder, I wonder, I, I wonder, have, have you ever heard these sayings? Will Serve no wine before it's time. Uh, some of you have heard that. Amen. This was an advertisement for Paul Masson Vineyards in 1976. And that commercial utilized the famous, the voice of the famous actor Orson Welles. Amen. Let, let, let's try another one. Have you ever heard the saying, God's ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts are above our thoughts? Amen. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. This would suggest, my brother and sister, that since God is above us, since God is higher than us, sometimes he does things above our understanding or our comprehension. Amen? You can't put God in a box and figure him out and control him. His thoughts are above our thoughts. His ways are above our ways. You can't control God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let, let's try a third. How about this one? Everything happens for a reason. Well? This saying would suggest that God has a divine plan for everything that happens in life. Whether it be life, death, financial, situational, or relational. Everything happens for a reason. One, one more. How about this? Everything has a season. Oh, I got some Bible readers in here. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 8 says, There is an appointed time for everything. And there is a time for every event under heaven. A time to give birth, hallelujah, I announced my daughter-in-law. 
and a time to die. We talked about Kevin's mother. A time to plant and a time to uproot what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. Hallelujah. A time to throw stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to shun embracing. A time to search and a time to give up as laws. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear apart and a time to sew together, a time to be silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. What are you saying, preacher? What I'm attempting to say, saints of God, is that collectively all these sayings seem to suggest that nothing happens by mistake. Amen. Nothing is by chance. There's a divine design to everything that happens in life. Amen. We may not understand it, nor may we want to accept it, but nothing happens by happenstance. Now I think I, I'm looking at you, look at me. I better put a pen in this right now because don't get it twisted. Saints of God, do you not know that all of us are going to die? Amen. Hebrews 9.27 says that it's appointed unto man once to die. But after this, the judgment. But some of us can accelerate the timing of our demise. Help me teach, Holy Ghost. You see, God has a divine plan. There's a great compendium. And we and the events of our lives are plotted across that compendium in the mind of God. However, my brothers and sisters, sometimes we can accelerate our demise. What are you talking about, preacher? God doesn't design for you to have COPD. No. He didn't design for you to have respiratory problems. He designed your lungs perfectly. You chose to smoke all those years. And as a result of your smoking all those years, now you have respiratory problems, COPD. God still has a design for you. You'll meet your design. However, you may accelerate your demise because of your lifestyle. Help me teach, Holy Ghost. God didn't design for us to be promiscuous in our lifestyle. God didn't design for you to get HIV or to get syphilis or to get gonorrhea. Call the roll, Reverend. <laughs> he didn't design for you to contact that. But your promiscuous lifestyle, your sleeping around, caused you to contract an STD which impacted your life. God still has a plan, mm -hmm. but your plan may have to be accelerated because of your activity. Now, I know, I know, I know I'm, 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 I'm preaching to folk in Zion and all of y'all saved and <laughs> Holy Ghost filled and sanctified, so none of y'all have any of the issues that I'm talking about. Hallelujah, praise God. I'm just saying, don't get it twisted. Don't blame God for negative things that occur in your life 
when you have brought those things upon yourself. There are consequences for our sins. But when we live in accordance with God's word and we walk in lockstep with Jesus the Christ, then God will ensure that we meet the design that he has proposed for us. What are you saying, preacher? Saints of God, anyone who reads the word carefully must admit that at different times, God deals in different ways with different people. When we speak of dispensational truth, we mean the truth of the word as related to God's program of the ages for the Jews and God's program for the Gentiles and God's program for the church. One of the problems we have is we try to extrapolate, we try to put God's programs for the Jews in the Old Testament upon ourselves today. When we don't live under the law, we live under grace. Help me teach, Holy Ghost. But you see, saints of God, in this text, Paul exp explains that the period of the law was a dispensation. And what's a dispensation? It's a special way in which God dealt with the children of Israel for a special purpose. God never gave the Mosaic law to the Gentiles. So to impose Jewish regulations on Gentiles or even on the church today is totally unscriptural. The Jews were heirs, for God had made a wonderful promise to them through Abraham. But it took many centuries before they received their promise. Even so, the Jews were in their spiritual childhood under the law. The rules and rituals of the law were the religious ABCs they had to learn before they could graduate into their full inheritance. But this dispensation or special way of God communicating his way had run its course and prepared the way for the advent of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. A new and more personal way of God communicating his way. God decided to do for us what the law could not do. He decided to send us his son so that we might be able to experience his love in a more personal and tangible way. Saints, Christ was born at the right time, in the right manner, and for the right purpose. And that purpose was to set us free. Hallelujah. Christ was born under the law. He obeyed the law and fulfilled the law in his life and death. His death on the cross set the Jews free from their legalistic bondage and opened the way for the fulfillment of the promises that God had made to Abraham. Do you not know that for some 15 centuries, Israel had been in that type of, of, of kindergarten or grade school learning their spiritual or religious ABCs so that they would be ready for the day when Christ would come. And come he did. In the fullness of time. Do you not know that the expression, the fullness of time, found in Galatians 4.4, 4, refers to that time when the world was providentially ready for the birth of the Savior? Historians tell us that the Roman world was in great expectation, waiting for a deliverer at the time when Jesus was born. The old religion were dying. The old philosophies were empty and powerless to change men's lives. Strange new mystery religions were invading the empire. Religious bankruptcy and spiritual hunger were everywhere. God was preparing the world for the, the, the birth of the Savior. Roads were connected, uh, city, uh, connected city with city, and all cities ultimately connected themselves with Rome. Roman laws protected the rights of citizens, and Roman soldiers guarded the peace that was called uh, Roman peace. Latin and Greek were known across the empire. Christ's birth at Bethlehem was not an accident. It was not happenstance. It was an appointment. Jesus came in the fullness of time to redeem them that were under the law. But let us turn to our text, saints. The Bible teaches us that after eight days, Jesus was circumcised. 
named in accordance with the proclamation made by the angel and then brought to Jerusalem and presented to the Lord in terms of the law's requirements and the fulfilling of all righteousness. His parents offered two turtle doves or two young pigeons because they were too poor to offer a lamb. And behold, there was a devout man filled with the Holy Ghost whose name was Simeon. The man had been told that he would not see death until he had seen the Messiah, yes, the Lord's Christ. Yes, Lord. So when he saw Jesus, Hallelujah. the Bible says he took him up into his arms yes, and he proclaimed, Lord, now let us thy servant depart in peace yes, according to thy word. Yes, For mine eyes have seen thy salvation which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Simeon had experienced exactly what the Holy Spirit had promised him. He met the Lord Jesus. He beheld his face. He experienced his touch. And he knew that it wasn't by chance or by happenstance. God had promised him that he would not die until he had seen the salvation of the world. And God had delivered. He knew that this baby was the Christ child. He knew that this baby was the salvation of the world. He knew that Jesus was born at the right time, in the right manner, and for the right purpose, and that purpose was to set each and every one of us free. Amen? Amen. Simeon knew that the old religions were dying, and that the old philosophies were empty and powerless to change men's lives. Simeon knew that the strange new mystery religions were invading the empire, and that religious bankruptcy and spiritual hunger were everywhere. And Simeon knew that God had prepared him for the coming of the Lord. Yes. Simeon knew that God may not come when you want him to. Hallelujah. But God is always Hallelujah. right on time. Amen. Amen. Saints meeting Jesus. It's not just by happenstance. Your initial meeting of Jesus. Are you coming to know Jesus? Or better yet, and more importantly, you're accepting him as your Lord and Savior. Wasn't just by happenstance. It wasn't a fluke. Don't let anybody tell you that. It wasn't a mistake. It wasn't by chance. But rather, it was by divine design. God intended for you to be where you were when you were there so that you could meet the Lord Jesus Christ for yourself. It may have been a friend that invited you. It may have been a family member that invited you. But God designed you so that on that day you would be where you needed to be to meet the Lord Jesus for yourself. It was your time to meet the master. It was your time to experience a right relationship with God. And it was your time to experience the promises of God. And now it's your time to tell somebody else about him. And if you've not met Jesus, if you haven't met him yet, if you haven't accepted him as your Lord and Savior yet, today may be your day. Today might be your divine appointment. Today will be the day that you'll never forget because it's your day to accept Jesus for yourself. As I was preparing this message and, and I was looking on the news and I saw that just last night the news report said 1,000 to 2,000 youth were right here in the city of Louisville 
out at the mall of St. Matthew's fighting, creating problems. So much so that they had to shut the mall down. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying, saints of God, we better be telling our children about Jesus. We better be telling them about the goodness and about the grace of God. Because you see, you can't be with your children at all times. And your children need to know that when they are somewhere and something breaks out, they need to act as a Christian would act and not go along with the crowd, but separate themselves from the crowd and represent their Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You never know when a life might be cut short. We were praying just this morning for another friend of one of the ministers in this church who was going to a school just to see his child perform in a play or in an activity at that school. But as he was walking in the door of that school, he got shot by mistaken identity. Satan is going to and fro all across this world seeking whom he may devour. His job is to seek, kill, and destroy. And saints of God, if we haven't gone and told it on the mountain, if we haven't gone and shared the good news of Jesus Christ, if we haven't gone and told people that he's not a baby anymore, but told people that Jesus lives and he can live inside you, if we haven't done our job, then shame on us. Your meeting Jesus was not by happenstance. It just didn't happen so that you could have your salvation. And that's enough. But it happened so that you could go and tell somebody about the goodness of God. It happened so you could tell somebody about God's grace. It happened so you could tell somebody about God's mercy. Somebody knows what I'm talking about. Somebody knows he's a mighty good God. Somebody knows he'll pick you up when you're down. Somebody knows he'll wipe your tear-stained eyes. Somebody knows that when you're sick, he'll make you well. Somebody knows that when you're tired, he'll give you energy to keep on keeping on. Somebody knows about the goodness of Almighty God. You're meeting Jesus. It's not just by happenstance. Amen. But there's a reason. There's a divine design. And God has a job for you to do. Amen. Wouldn't it be sad? Wouldn't it be sad? Saints of God, on that great day, when God calls you before his throne, yes, he does. and you stand before him, and he opens up the book of life. Have mercy. And all he sees. Yes, your name's in there. Yes, you were saved. But from that point forward, nothing. Never witnessed to anyone. Never invited anybody to church. Never told anybody on your job about the goodness of God. Never shook anybody's hand on Sunday morning when you were fellowshipping with the saints. Wouldn't that be sad? But oh, wouldn't it be a good thing if you saw him with a smile on his face as, as he turned the pages. Yes, you were busy on this day when you witnessed to sister so and so and yes you were busy on this day when you went to the hospital and you visited brother so and so and yes you were busy on this day when the person was hungry and needed to be fed and you offered them your lunch money yes you were busy yes you were busy yes you were busy yes you were busy come thy good and faithful servant you've been faithful over a few things come and enjoy the glory As you go, tell the world. 
as you go. Tell the world. Tell the world about Jesus. Tell them all about his love. The doors of this church are open, and we invite you to come. Would you stand with us now as the choir leads us in an invitational hymn. The doors of this church are open, and we invite you to come. Let today be your divine day of appointment. Come. If you don't know the Lord Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we invite you to come and accept him today. Today is your day of divine appointment. Won't you come? Won't you come? Is there one today? 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 there one today? As the organist continues to play, saints of God, as we have mentioned so many times before, Tomorrow is not promised to any of us. That old cliche of why put off for tomorrow, what you can do today, is true. I've talked to many people over the years and they've said repeatedly, Reverend, I just wasn't ready. I, I wasn't ready to give myself to the Lord. I wanted to wait it until I wanted to wait until I got my life together. Guess what? You never will get your life together. Do I have a witness? When we try to do it in and of our own strength, when we try to do it based off our own understanding saints we fail miserably but when we let go and let God when we go to him in sincerity and tell him Lord I know I'm not worthy I know I make mistakes I know I still fall down But even in spite of all of that, your word taught me that you loved me beyond my sins. You look beyond my fault and saw my needs. And while I'm not worthy and while I'm not strong enough to do it in and of myself, I trust that you can help me. And when you say that to Jesus, when you tell Jesus, I trust that you can help me, that's when he gets involved in your life. That's when he strengthens you. That's when he fights your battles for you. That's when he thwarts off the, the arrows from the adversary. And that's when no weapon formed against you will prosper. Don't leave here today without having the assurance that you know Jesus 
as your personal Lord and Savior. I, I'm through. It, it, it just barely is 1230. But I told the deacons before we came out, look at CNN. Look at MSNBC. Look at Fox News Channel. The Bible said in the fullness of time, Jesus came. And I shared with you what was going on. False religions, false practices, false prophets. That was for his advent when he came as a baby. He came in the fullness of time to set us free from the law and from legalism. He came in the fullness of time so we could have a personal relationship with him and, and, and feel what his love is like. But the Bible doesn't stop there. Because the Bible says that he is coming again. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 says, I will not have you be ignorant. But the dead in Christ shall rise. He is coming again. He's coming again to claim his own. And then it tells us that those who are yet alive will be caught up with them in the air to meet him in the sky. He is coming back again. What are you saying, preacher? All I'm saying, saints of God, is that if you look at the world in the world condition today, who would have thunk? That on De I said thunk, that on December the 26th, it when the 27th, it would be 70 degrees. Winter time. When it should be snow on the ground. Winter time. When you should have your furs on. Winter time. But yet Rem's in a shirt because it's 70 degrees. If you don't think that Jesus is not coming back again, I've got some news for you. Global warming is just a sign that the time is ending up and Jesus is coming back again. And you better be ready. We'll now have a report. From Sister Nanny. Come on, my brother. Bless you. Pastor Joanna, officers and members, we have Sweet Para Lacey, who wishes to join by Christian experience. Amen, 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 amen. <laughs> brother Lacey? Brother Lacey, you've been coming for quite some time. And I want to let you know that your presence has been noted as a pastor of this church you repeatedly come down front and shake my hand and let me know that you are here Amen. you let me know that you are a worshiper and a believer in Jesus Christ and we've never sat down and talked but just your behavior just your actions show that you want to be in the household of God expressing your faith in God and for that I say hallelujah Brother Lacey, you, you are joining by Christian experience, which would suggest that you have already confessed your belief in Jesus Christ. You have already been a member of another church, is that correct? All right. You have already been baptized by full immersion. You are a believer in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Is that correct? Yes. Amen. Then, my brother, as pastor of this church, I extend to you a hearty welcome and express to you our appreciation for your being obedient to the movement of the Holy Ghost Amen. and coming down to partner with us and join us as we worship and serve our Lord together. Amen? Amen. 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 And on the first Sunday, which is next Sunday, we will extend to you the right hand of fellowship, I as well as all of the other ministers and the officers of this church, welcoming you as a full-fledged member of this church. Amen? Amen. 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 Let me ask you, Brother Lacey. Have you ever 
seen heaven? Yes. You have seen heaven. No, I haven't. You haven't seen heaven. If I seen heaven, I wouldn't be back here. Uh, you are? Well, would you like to get a glimpse of heaven right now? Would you like to see what's going on in heaven right now? Yes. You would like to see. Zion, let's show him what's going on in heaven right now. <laughs> Brother Lacey, the angels in heaven are around the throne. They are calling out your name. They are clapping for you, and they are praising God that you came out this morning to join this fellowship. God bless you. Well, when you said about heaven, I have died. Okay, all right. But I haven't seen heaven. All right, you're all right. So, so you are walking miracle right now that you're still with us. Well, we look forward to sitting down with you and sharing and finding out how God has moved on your life. Amen? God bless you. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Our steward for the month is Brother Percy Ross. He'll be with you right now, and he will escort you to the back. Would you follow him, and he'll get additional information. First month, February. February. Amen. February Month Club, please be sure to reach out to Brother Lacey. Amen. Let's give God another hand clap of praise. Is she advised, uh, has she been advised that we talk about the start of the time? You don't, you don't know about all that. All right, all right, all right. Reverend William Sidney Partier, Denzel Washington, <laughs> a.k.a. He, 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 he doesn't know about that. Sister Zena, would you like to make an announcement about the watch night service? What would you do with the mic, Larry? You put it back on. Give the mic. To, well, give the mic to the woman. You asked me because she make an announcement. Thank you, Pastor. Good morning, everyone. Okay. I come on behalf on the night watch service and the breakfast. Me and my partner in crime out here. <laughs> no. Uh, there is a mistake in the bulletin. It says 6.30. I want to make that correction first. It will start at 7.30. Nine, Nine, Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Well, see, they done changed. I didn't know. I'm sorry. That, I apologize. Nine o'clock. Everybody write that down. Let me write it first. Nine o'clock. Thank you. Uh, we are asking everyone to bring their favorite dish and come fellowship with us. And then after we fellowship, we will come in here, have service. After the service, we're going to have a jazzy breakfast. The women ministry will be hosting that. And we are going to have a meeting over here on the 23rd side to take a list for donations, volunteer to help clean up, and everything. So everyone, please come, sign up, and come out and have a good time. Amen. Uh, have, thank you. Amen. 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 Nothing for him. I, I got mine. Amen. 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 All minds clear. All hearts clear. Amen. How many, how many of our college students who've been away are, are back with us this morning? I see Jacqueline, college students. Zena, when you get to college, we all going to shout, baby, okay? Okay. All right. All right. Jackie, come here. Come on. Come on up here. This your what, second year? Third year? What? You kidding me? Are you serious? Are you serious? This your third year? Woo. We've watched this baby grow up. Amen. 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 Where we send you? You went over where we helped send you. Where Europe? How many countries? Seven countries, you went over representing us there, didn't you? And you did a good job. You, you've been representing us good at, I can't even say it, that school where you're going. University of Kentucky. Joe Greer, he'd say it in a minute, but. <laughs> As we come to a close, sweetheart, you want you want to say anything to your church? Mm -hmm. 
thank you for all of your prayers uh, throughout all of this. I really appreciate it and for all of your support through the years. Amen. 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 Thank you. Where's Elise at? Stand up, Elise. At WKU. Come on up here, girl. Thank you. I said, well, all my power suit. <laughs> okay, now you surprised me too. What year are you in? You a senior? <laughs> Are you representing your city and your your church and your family well down there? You you say that again. I surely am. You surely am. <laughs> Amen. Let's give them a hand clap. Amen. <laughs> praise and support. We're so proud of the both of you. Amen. Amen. Now we're gonna hold hands here and we're gonna go ahead and dismiss church. Would you stand with us as we give the benediction? Dear God, our Father, we come before you now with nothing but praise on our lips. Thank you, God, for setting a divine appointment for each one of us, for allowing us to meet your darling son, Jesus the Christ, and through meeting him, have a relationship with you. Thank you for these two beautiful young women who are matriculating through college and who will represent not only their families, not only this city, not only their church, but also represent you in everything that they say and do. Continue to bless them, fortify them, protect them, and then, Lord, use them for your glory. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, and the love of his darling son, Jesus the Christ, now rest, rule, and abide with these thy people now henceforth and forevermore. And let the redeemed of the Lord all sing together threefold amen. We came to worship, but we leave too. God be with you is our prayer. Congratulations, sweetheart. All right. And congratulations to you, baby. All right. Be good. Be good. My brother, bless you. I take it you had a wonderful Christmas.